more lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS 82 apostrophe. It is week. What is it now? 463. It is the opening week, the opening salvo of what will be the month of September. And it feels like forever since I actually done one of these. Because back in the summer, I sort of put out an entire month out ahead of me just because I knew how busy this uh, this August was going to be. And so, really, I haven't done a body bags video in God, forever. Anyways, um, so how do you do these things anyways? I'm not sure. I can't really remember. But let's look at uh, what I want to... I was shocked. Shocked to find two films. April Fool's Day from yeah, 86. And the original ha uh, My Bloody Valentine. Um, never been done on body bags. The entire history of the eight years and up to thousands of reviews. No one has ever thought to do these two movies. So I thought, what a way to start off September and look at one movie, uh, from 86. Uh, Fred, uh, Fred is a free, yeah, Fred Walton. Um, nothing to do with the Waltons. If you even catch that. Um, but I, well, now that I say that, uh, no, really nothing to do with the Malt uh, with the Waltons. Uh, but this is a movie that, uh, uh, 1986, uh, you know, in not so different ways than, uh, Scream. Um, it does sort of parody itself a little bit, but unlike Scream takes itself very serious. And so the cliches, really the cliches of this film, uh, that are, are, are imbued in this film, um, serve the purpose for all ultimately the final twist and final reveal which i've been thinking about this do i talk spoilers non-spoilers there is some i know i think there was a really sketchy remake of this thing i think i didn't look um i'm pretty sure there was and i have not seen it and probably will not see it um but if you've never seen the original april fool's day i think i'm just gonna stay away from the final reveal the final twist Although, just think of the title. <laughs> I mean, really think of the title. Um, what we have here is, of course, one of my favorite subgenres, island horror. And one that, uh, a nice little piece of work that sort of, like I said, takes a look back at all that has come in terms of slashers and whatnot. Uh, it puts us on an island. Love that. Uh, it is a slasher. Ten Little Indian style. Love that. Um, great cast. Uh, headlined in part by Amy Steele, of course, our final girl from Friday the 13th Part 2. Um, who's fantastic. The cast is fantastic. And uh, we've got Biff from uh, from uh, uh, Back to the Future. Um, and um, God, was it? There's the kid from, the, the kid that was out all night um, working the, uh, uh, the strip club from summer school. He's in this thing. I mean, the cast is great, man. Uh, these kids basically are all invited by their friend Muffy from college. They're all about to graduate college and move on. And so Muffy, who has this, uh, uh, this it's like a mansion, man. Uh, it's it's going to be will to her, basically. But she, um, boy, I'm starting to get into the, whew, under the surface a little bit. Um, let, me, let me just kind of, Yes. Okay. So, Muffy. Okay. We will find out in the film that she is going to inherit this mansion. Okay. And so, I guess I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop there. I don't know. I probably already went too far. So, anyway, so she invites all her friends from college. Um, Some are very new friends. Some have been her friends for quite a while. And as sort of a last hurrah, they're all going to get together and have a fun time. But on their trip, which is so cool, man, on their trip over the ferry uh, to the island, of course, uh, two of our characters, they it, it's kind of like this simultaneous almost. They pull a gag and look at this. This is funny. And then this really tragic accident happens involving uh, involving one of the guys who works on the, on the boat. And uh, he ends up... He ends up in the, he's in the water and he ends up because he's, he thinks he can tie the boat off from the water and he gets himself caught between the boat and the dock and just mangles his face, man, comes up out of the water and he's just like, ha, right? Well, that, that sets the perfect tone for this, for, okay, 
this may not be the most idyllic getaway we've ever had. And and it, and this does it a couple times right in the beginning. And I, you know, and I thought it's got a pretty big budget for these types of movies. The writing is really good, and, and it and, and it does take its time in certain setting certain things into motion to try to create a tone that is ultimately in the end, man. When the great reveal on uh, is unveiled, yeah. You, you almost expect a certain character to just, I mean, just lose it. And and I, I was thinking to myself a little, just a few minutes ago, I was thinking to myself, if, if there ever was a real remake, like if, if, ever, if somebody like James Wan looked at this material and said, let's move this forward, I would love to see some, some of the things that happen in this movie maybe get twisted around and you know you watch how saw ends and how great that it's almost like james wan and april fool's day is a match made in heaven as far as either probably just pushing it forward not so much a remake but push maybe pushing it forward and taking certain things and you could even have shoot he could even have fun with his own movies the early saw movies and uh dead silence uh and i was just thinking james wan man that that would almost be it, it, the writing would have to be, and it would almost have to look back in a really same way that its predecessor did. Uh, anyways, I'm getting off on a pretty, not so wild tangent, but I really dig this movie, man. The kills, man, so, uh, more than not, they, they're off screen, which, you know, begs you, where did the $5 million go to? Uh, the, the location, shooting location, island, I'm sure, you know, a lot of that stuff probably happened, right? Um so anyway, and I'm just getting this collected cast, I'm sure too, probably took a little bit of that money. Um, but once they're in there, once things, once the dominoes begin to fall and they start not really like turning in on each other, but they do in a way because, you know, initially certain pranks are going to be happening to them. You know, this is, of course, leading up. This is April Fool's weekend, right? And so Muffy is really having fun by laying out the red carpet treatment for her friends. She wants this to be the greatest weekend ever. And uh, and ultimately, by the end, I would say it is it is a great weekend. Um, and I, I so now people people take the twist and the reveal. I, I, I've heard it. It's split, I guess, you know, where some just take it and go. And then the others are like, yes, that was, that was interesting. I like that because I think it sets up for possibilities. Not that anyone ever capitalized or, you know, did anything with it, but it does set up some unique ideas in while taking a look back at itself, much, you know, in a way Scream did in 96, looked backwards and set, you know, it's up, but Scream really set a whole new thing in emotion. This one, I don't really know how much this movie really influence things moving forward. But it is an interesting moment of stopping and looking back now. Um, I'll just say this, you know, if you've never seen this movie before, let's just say not everything they know about Muffy is what it seems to be. A lot with Muffy is surface level and they will start to learn a little bit more. And of course, as the body count builds, um, it's almost like Scooby-Doo-ish in a way where you know, you get down to your couple main characters and they will start putting things together and they will start to formulate this picture of what is. And I'm telling you, be, beyond all of that, it is a terrifying, it is pretty terrifying thought. And one where you're like, huh. And, and, and it's almost kind of like where you would hope or hoped scream, the new screams, maybe would have gone. Anyways, so... In week 463, the opening salvo of September. I think I'm going to try to make this really super quick and just end this here. April Fool's Day, man, 1986. Um, great movie. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I love this movie. I really do need an upgrade desperately. I'm still riding. Oh, I didn't even show up. I'm still riding this double feature, which gave me the idea for my bloody Valentine. So that's coming up in a few weeks. Um, still riding the double feature release. And uh, really probably need to upgrade. I think to Scream Factory, maybe release April Fool's Day. Maybe. I have to look on that. Anyways, there goes the TV. That's probably my cue. 
April Fool's Day, man. If it's been a while, go back and revisit because with things with time and age, you know, sometimes age things age well. And I really think this is one of those movies you can go back and have a lot of fun with if it's been like forever. And if you've never seen it, oh man. I got to know what you think about the twist and the reveal. Even if you have seen it, what do you think? Are you those on the side of eh? Or are you on those side that just absolutely love it like I do? And what do you think about my James Wan idea? A marriage made in heaven, maybe? Uh, I wish somebody would hear this and some producer put this thing into motion. Anyways, here we go. Have a great September. And thank you for all your support. Thank you for all that you guys do in terms of just clicking in and watching. Appreciate it to the utmost. Have an absolutely fantastic September as the weeks begin to roll by us. As always, we end these things. Oh, and yeah, Bills, right? Looks like we got a great season looking in force. And the Bulldogs. As always, we end these things off with Go Bills. This is not a dream. Not a dream.